Adventures Around the World The bets that Mr. Fogg had with the members had created quite a fever of suspense in London. There were many wagers laid on Mr. Fogg. A well-known old gentleman called Lord Elbermal had bet five thousand pounds in his favour. Well, gentlemen, if Phileas Fogg had come in by the seven twenty-three train, he would have got here by now. We can therefore consider the bet as won," said Andrew Stuart, barely able to contain his excitement. Fallaton, however, felt they shouldn't celebrate too soon. He was of the opinion that Mr. Fogg was well known for being punctual. He never arrived too soon, nor too late, and could well appear at the door at the last minute. Why, if I saw him now, I would not believe it," said Stuart. Ralph declared that Mr. Fogg's project was absurdly foolish. Whatever his punctuality, he could not prevent the delays which were certain to occur, and even a delay of two or three days would mean the failure of his project. The four men had received no news of Mr. Fogg at all, though there were telegraph lines all along his route. The China, the only steamer on which he could have got to London on time, had arrived the previous day, and Fogg's name was not on the passenger list. So the four men at the Reform Club felt they were justified in thinking that they had won the bet. Stuart looked up at the clock. Only five minutes more, he said, looking at the others. The tension was unbearable. There was total silence in the room except for the ticking of the clock and the muffled sound of the crowd from outside. The gentlemen now silently counted off the seconds. At the fifty-fifth second, there was a roar of hurrahs from the crowd outside. The gentlemen rose to their feet, and almost immediately, the door of the salon opened, and Mr. Fearless Fogg appeared, followed by a crowd of people. Here I am, gentlemen," announced Mr. Fogg.